Hello, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the new shows that I watched during like this past year, things that got me through lockdown and all that stuff. It's going to be new shows, so not shows that I've rewatched because I have rewatched a lot. Parks and Rec, Bob's Burgers are a couple of examples, IT Crowd, like I've rewatched them. Taskmaster Ghosts, <laughs> I'm sure you've heard me talk enough about the Taskmaster and Ghosts, but um, so yeah, it's going to be new shows that I've watched during this past year or past six months. I don't know, time is going so weirdly. So yeah, I hope you enjoy and let's just get into it. So starting with the sitcoms that I watched. Um, one of the ones I've watched most recently is Dead Pixels, which is on Channel 4. So a couple of people recommended this to me in my Taskmaster Series 11 video because Charlotte Ritchie actually stars in it. She plays a character called Alison, curiously, which is also the character she plays in Ghosts. Um, so I like to think that it's kind of her backstory, even though they're like completely different people, but still, it's still interesting. So Dead Pixels is about a group of friends, Meg, Nikki and Usman, who are addicted to playing this online multiplayer role-playing game, which is called King Kingdom Scrolls. It's very similar to kind of like, um, like World of Warcraft kind of thing. I don't really play those kind of games, but it's really interesting. So it takes place like half in kind of like the real world and then kind of in the game as well. So you can see, see their actual like game characters playing and fighting and stuff. So Meg is played by Alexa Davis. Nikki is played by Will Merrick. Usman is played by Sargon Yelda. And Russell is played by David Mumeni. It also features Rose Matafeo in series two. So I definitely recommend watching it for Rose. She is a brilliant character. Um, so the whole the plot kind of revolves around these three mainly playing the game and then they Meg meets this guy called Russell who she kind of has a crush on and to kind of get to know him a bit more she invites him to play this Kingdom Scrolls game and he's like really bad at it but he's kind of quite rich so he gets to buy all the kind of expensive like overpowered weapons and things so he's like yeah, it's really, really funny. And Alison is their flatmate who doesn't really play this game, so she's like the normal one. But it's really, really hilarious. I really enjoyed it. Usman is my favourite character. He's like an American, um, like, dad. And he, like, just basically ignores his family. And it's just really funny. I just, I strongly recommend. If you like Charlotte Ritchie, definitely give it a go. Good. I watched it in, I watched the entire series in one day, I think. Or maybe two. But so good i cannot recommend it enough so another show that i watched in quarantine was staff let's flats which i watched because a bunch of people from ghosts were in it so it's created by jamie dimitri who um i recognize him from fleabag he played one of the guys that fleabag goes on a date with and stuff and he is brilliant he i think he created it he wrote it he stars in it it's genius it's brilliant it takes so he the story kind of follows staff who works in a letting agency owned by his father who is from cyprus i think staff is very socially awkward he's not good with social cues he puts himself into very uncomfortable situations when he's dealing with like prospective tenants and dealing with issues with the flats and it's like if you've ever rented like you'll know the kind of incompetency that you get with landlords and like estate agents sometimes so it's a really funny look at at them and it's yeah it's brilliant so as i said i watched it because i really like ghosts so it features katie wicks kiel smith bino and alastair roberts all of whom are in ghosts playing mary mike and thomas's cousin respectively charlotte ritchie also appears in one episode where she kind of plays this like posh rich kind of like entitled person who's trying to kind of relate to people who don't have money and i think that's a really interesting look especially because staff she really like latches onto staff and it's really 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 funny i'm not going to give any spoilers to anything also his sister um natasha or natasia i'm not sure how it's pronounced but she also stars alongside playing his on-screen sister um sophie or sophie uh, some people pronounce it different ways and um so that's really cool i love it when like family or like brother or sister duos like go on screen together i think it brings some like awesome chemistry and those two are just absolutely hilarious. So, like, um, Staff is kind of this, like, socially inept estate agent. And Sophie is um, kind of just really wanting to, like, sing and dance. And she's also socially awkward, but, like, 
more outgoing in a way and they just make they're absolutely hilarious with each other they're absolutely brilliant and if you want to watch staff that's that's it's on channel four so like all four so a show that's been recommended to me a lot since I started making videos on ghosts is Yonderland, which is created by the Idiot Six, who created Horrible Histories, well, who starred in Horrible Histories and also created and starred in Ghosts and Bill, which is a film about William Shakespeare. So I'm sure you all know who the Idiot Six are. Yeah, because a lot of you watch Ghosts on this channel, obviously, um, but they play like... So they all have like a singular character that they play, I believe, and then they also play like loads of kind of minor characters so they play multiple characters which is something that I loved about Horrible Histories is the way that they are so versatile and how many different characters they can portray like in the same show and I think it's genius I think it's amazing um so the main story follows Debbie Maddox who is just like a normal like woman in real life she's well, it's seemingly normal woman and she's kind of getting bored with her life and just housework and being like a stay-at-home mum and everything like that. And then one day a little elf brings her in to Yonderland, which is through her kitchen cupboard. And Yonderland is this magical, fantastical, silly, like extremely silly um, world. And she is the chosen one destined to save Yonderland from like evil forces. And it's brilliant it's incredibly silly and that is exactly the type of show that i want to watch <laughs> at the moment it's escapism at its finest so debbie meets a different set of characters each episode obviously there are a few that stay the same but she meets a different set of characters each episode so my some of my favorite ones are the ninnies which are a bunch of like idiots basically they it's just so funny <laughs> and then there's they meet these monks that have to tell the truth all the time and a detective who's a fraud and it's just it's just genius it's amazing it's hilarious it's as soon as soon as I watched the first episode I was like okay yeah everyone was right this show is amazing so one of the reasons I hadn't watched it sooner was because it's on Sky I didn't have Sky but someone very amazingly pointed out that it's actually on Now TV so I bought my t Now TV just purely to watch Yonderland so the last sitcom that I've got on this list is Motherland which I think I mentioned in my IT crowd video, but it is um, a sitcom created by Sharon Horgan, who did Catastrophe, she stars in This Way Up, um, Holly Walsh, who is a comedian, and Graham and Helen Linnehan, who, Graham Linnehan isn't the best person at the moment, he's done some things that I really don't agree with, um, so if that puts you off watching it, then I understand. But apart from that aspect of it, it is a brilliant show. It is hilarious. The show is it follows a bunch of um, parents who are dealing with kind of like middle class parenthood, you know, dealing with balancing work and childcare, dealing with like entitled parents and some some of them are single parents. And even though that sounds like like I don't relate to any of that because I'm not a parent, um, but it's it's still amazing it's really funny like <laughs> it's yeah it's just really really funny so it stars Anna Maxwell Martin as the main character and her character is the one that kind of she is she always had her mother looking after her kids so she is kind of launched into actually having to balance her work her high profile job with an incompetent husband and dealing with having to actually look after her kids like fully. It also features Diane Morgan who is a comedian and she's in Afterlife, um, she's in yeah a bunch of different things. She Her character is my favourite and the entitled kind of pretentious parent is played by Lucy Punch who again has been in so many different things. She's in Hot Fuzz, um, yeah she's in just loads. Her, her character even though she's annoying and would be the person that I would like get along with the least it is absolutely amazing I love her character. Okay on to the drama and crime shows so the first one is The Queen's Gambit which is on Netflix if you don't know and it's so amazing and it was actually Netflix's most watched um, TV series ever until Bridgerton I think took over and Lupin which is like a French drama which I haven't watched but I really want to it seems like exactly my sort of thing um so yeah The Queen's Gambit again I binged watched this it was amazing like who would have thought a drama about chess would be so brilliant but it is it's amazing it stars Anya Taylor-Joy who is such an incredible actress 
and it takes place in the 60s so the outfits are lovely and I'm not sure if they're historically accurate per se. I've seen a few kind of criticism of it but from a person, from person who doesn't know anything about historical fashion it is beautiful costumes, absolutely love it. So obviously the whole thing is about this chess prodigy Beth Harmon who is just a genius at chess and like I don't know anything about chess just putting that out there but it doesn't make it any less enjoyable. So it follows her life as she tries to win like the world tournament in chess and it deals with a lot of really important issues that aren't really explored as much. So it, it deals with addiction, um, an addiction caused from like a young age and trauma, PTSD and just, it's just really, it's just brilliant. <laughs> um, I know it's, there's some people have criticised it for certain things but from like just an, an audience perspective and how enjoyable it is, it's absolutely brilliant like it was all I could think about for like the next few weeks afterwards yeah it deals with grief as well a lot and kind of the impact of child stars and child like famous children and how that could impact them later in life and how they peak at such or they seem to peak at such a young age and yeah like I can't recommend it enough so a show that I was actually very late to the party to is The Crown and The Crown is on Netflix and when it first kind of started airing or when I first started hearing people talk about it I wasn't that interested like I'm not that interested in the monarchy and but then season four came out and it's all about Princess Diana and apparently like I just heard so much controversy about it and I was like mm, I have to give this a go now and it is so good <laughs> like it's just brilliant and there was also a mix of just kind of like pure escapism when you're in this amazing palace and just kind of like nothing really happens but it's still interesting and then you've got like really really dramatic moments and yeah it is a very interesting show and I've been thinking of doing a video on it like just about the crown and the historical accuracy and dramatization of real life events about people who are still alive and in power like they're very influential people and the fact that this show has been able to be made and actually criticize things like especially in the last season and by the sounds of where it's going um following like diana's death and things like i have a feeling they're not gonna hold back and i applaud them for that because the royal family is something that a scene kind of unbreakable yeah so it has that kind of mix of being like a chill comfort watching show but then also drawing attention to important events and really heavy events as well but some episodes that I really did enjoy is I loved the way that they showed Wales in it Wales is a country in the UK that is kind of ignored quite a lot and the two Welsh episodes I think are the best I might be biased by saying that but one of the episodes features um, Prince Charles comes to study in Aberystwyth which is where I go to university and if you look if you see in the episode like they film on the Aberystwyth promenade and the, outside the old college and it's just so beautiful and they've done such a good job of portraying kind of like the strong Welsh identity that is here in Aberystwyth and I think that is brilliant and they also um, portrayed the Aberfan disaster very amazingly and sensitively and I think that was really really good like they criticized the royals a lot with that episode and called out the coal mining industry that like basically resulted in the killing of so many children and it's such a heavy episode I didn't know much about the royals and like I still don't know everything but there is a lot that goes on with that family so onto the kind of like crime dramas so the first one I watched in quarantine was Traces. Traces was originally on Alibi and is now on BBC so if you're in the UK you can watch it on BBC iPlayer which is where I watched it. So Traces follows a young woman called Emma Hedges who is played by Holly Windsor and she starts working in a forensic lab. Yeah they're looking at kind of like drug use in Dundee, uh, it takes place in Dundee in Scotland and kind of like crime scene analysis and she begins to take a course alongside her work about forensic anthropology. She starts to see links in this fictional course um, to her own mother's unsolved murder and so it kind of starts, it sparks up her all these feelings about her mother's unsolved murder and they kind of start to reinvestigate, re look into it and yeah it's really really good 
Um, a lot of people compared it to Line of Duty because only because uh, Martin Compton play is in it and he was in like he plays Steve in Line of Duty, but it's it's not like that at all. It also features Lauren Fraser in it who plays Professor Gordon, who's Emma's boss, and she. Um, the actress was actually in Breaking Bad, she played Lydia, so it's got a really, really good cast. And yeah, I strongly recommend. I'm really, I really like crime dramas and I think it was a really interesting way of kind of doing a crime drama when they're in the position to like investigate it themselves. Yeah, I strongly recommend. It was very good. Um, and I think there's, they've announced a season two, so I think that will probably be coming out either this year or next year. So yeah, I definitely recommend this. So the last show I'm going to talk about loads is The Alienist and this is actually referring to season two of The Alienist because I watched season one ages ago but yeah season two it was originally on an American TV service called TNT I don't really know much about it but it's available in the UK on Netflix so it's based on the book by Caleb Carr and it takes place in the like the late 1800s early 1900s in New York City and it follows a, so the main character-ish, I don't know, the main, there's like three main characters, but the main thing, the alienist, is basically a criminal psychologist, or psych, yeah, criminal psychologist, and he deals with kind of children and how children could grow up to be criminals. So that's really cool. So he's called Chrysler, and he is played by Daniel Brühl. So that's one of the main characters. The second one is a New York Times like cartoonist illustrator so he works out with like journalism and people like that and he's played by Luke Evans. Then there's Sarah who is the first woman to be recruited into the NYPD. She starts to actually get involved with detective work and she's played by Dakota Fanning. So really good cast again and yeah it's really cool. It's, they deal with very heavy subjects so watch with caution and yeah it is very dark yeah it's just really good i don't think i've seen anything like like it before like exactly like it and the crimes they look at are unique and again they look at it from a kind of psychological perspective as well and trying to kind of like child upbring upbringing perspective and there's the struggles of sarah dealing with like you know being a woman in a man's world and yeah it's very very good yeah, these are just a few of the shows I could think of um, because I do watch a lot. Um, but at the moment, it has been just kind of like, you know, like comfort shows. But these are the shows I've watched that have really kind of stuck with me um, during this year. And yeah, they're all really good. I can't recommend them enough. They are just amazing. And hopefully you'll like them. I reckon you guys will definitely like the sitcoms. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a like and comment down below what shows that you have watched in lockdown in this year, which has been incredibly stressful. What shows have provided you with some sort of escapism? And if you like kind of talking about TV shows, that kind of thing, then subscribe to my channel and I will have loads of videos out for you guys soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.